Hello everyone and welcome back to our reading of Ghosts from the Great Mystery Series. Today's chapter, Houses of Terror. Let's get started. Some ghosts seem to attach themselves to a particular house, then turn it into a place of terror, often forcing the people who live there to leave. The unknown force which attacked the Greenfield family is fairly typical of a phenomenon labelled poltergeist, which is German for noisy ghost. The activity began quietly with sounds like footsteps on the landing. After a few weeks, small objects began to fly around the house when nobody could possibly have thrown them. For some reason, vegetables seemed particularly likely to take to the air. After about three months, heavy furniture and other objects were moving on their own. Eventually, the family fled to stay with friends and sold the house. The trouble ceased immediately. Portergeists have been reported for hundreds of years. Their spectacular and often violent activities have made them favorite subjects for investigation. One of the earliest to be properly recorded, was known as the Demon Drummer of Tedworth. The trouble began in March 1661, when a magistrate named Mompesson confiscated a drum belonging to a local beggar. The drum was placed in Mompesson's house at Tedworth. Soon afterwards, strange bangs and hammerings were heard in the house. After about a month, the poltergeist seems to have discovered the drum. Night after night, for two months, the drum played itself for hours at a time. Then the haunting took a new turn. Mompesson's children were thrown out of bed several times, and floor boards ripped up. Shoes, books, and clones were thrown around the house by some invisible force. At one time, the beggar claimed that he had caused the drum to play and other disturbances himself as revenge for Mompesson confiscating his drum. However, this claim was never proved. The true cause remains a mystery. The old City Hall of Toronto, Canada is notorious for being haunted. Mysterious voices and footsteps have been heard and the temperature sometimes drops suddenly. A janitor working in the building said he was once rooted to the floor by an invisible force. He was going down the back staircase when he felt something grip his ankles. The lights were on at the time, but there was nothing and no one around that could have held him down. One of the judges who presides in the courts there said, when I take the private judge's staircase, this thing catches my gown or gives me a gentle push every once in a while. However, to this day, none of the strange happenings at the old city hall have been explained. For centuries, it was assumed that outbreaks of poltergeist activity were caused by a mischievous or evil spirit. The very name, poltergeist, indicates this belief. It was thought that some spirit had a grudge against the inflicted family and was taking revenge. Working on this belief, some families have called in priests to conduct an exorcism. This involves casting out a demon spirit from a place or person. Sometimes an exorcism can calm or remove a poltergeist but it is not always successful. In 1967, an American priest had just completed an exorcism when the poltergeist tipped a basket of dirty laundry over him. Modern researchers have come to a different conclusion about poltergeists. They believe that the phenomenon is caused by humans, though they have no control over what happens. Most poltergeist hauntings are centered on a single person, usually a teenager. Strange events 
only occur when that person is present, and sometimes follow them to different houses. Often least focused persons are young and usually worried or anxious about something. Investigators have suggested that the emotional power of these focused persons is translated into physical power. This power is able to move objects without the person actually touching them. It has even been credited with making objects appear from nowhere, a phenomenon known as an apport. This theory has become increasingly popular in recent years. However, the true case of poltergeist activity remains a mystery. One of the most famous modern cases of a house being possessed is that of the Amityville Horror in the USA. In the winter of 1976, the owners of a house in the town of Amityville in Long Island, New York reported more than 80 incidents in the space of 28 days. George and Kathleen Lutz and their three children had only just moved into the house when they started hearing strange noises. Then they found windows and doors that they had locked to have been mysteriously forced to open and for no apparent reason. They reported finding tracks like those of an enormous pig in the snow leading up to and away from the house. One night, George Lutz woke up in bed to find his wife floating in the air above his bed. When he pulled her back down and put the light on, the woman, who had seconds before been young and good-looking, suddenly appeared old and ugly. The couple said it was six hours before she returned to normal. The Lutz family soon moved out of the house, and it was later discovered that the previous occupier, Ronald DeFeo, had murdered his family there. However, many people have since cast doubt on the truth of what the Lutz family claimed. Since the Lutz family left the house, there has been no repetition of the haunting they say that they experienced. Very puzzling. So, what's your opinion on all this? I'd love to hear it. Anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you next time. See ya!